At first, it's it's almost like it's a dream, like you you, you think oh, it couldn't have happened, and then later it like starts to kick in. So, but I, I don't think you can get over the winning feeling. Yes. I think whether you ride your first win or your fiftieth win or carrying yeah. on down yes. the line, it all get feels that. the same. Yeah. yeah. Trusted friend and uh, colleague, co-host, semi-retired, I don't know what we want to call him, is back. And he's not grumpy for a change because he's been out in the bush felt and my oh my, he's come back with a new shirt on, this twinkle in his eye, bushy head. We haven't got into the podcast yet, just wait. <laughs> how are you, uh, Grumps? Oh, right, yeah. uh, how was your holiday? It was good. It was excellent. Uh, how many birds did you rack up? We well, didn't rack up any birds. The missus was grumpy with birds. We were looking for lions. Okay, okay. Which we found. We found. Uh, yeah, we saw some lovely pictures. Maybe you can share one of those pictures of the lions uh, to the podcast group, and they'll post it up on the on the on the show and let everybody enjoy the lovely lions you no, saw. We can do that. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Good work. Today's guest on the In the Box Seat podcast is a, a young rider by the name of Matthew Thackeray, um, who is uh, going to spend some time with us. We're going to learn a bit more about him. And just, uh, what's that saying? Chew the cud. Is that such a word? It is yeah. chew the cud. Chew the cud. If you're a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, how are you? No, I'm well, thanks. And yourself? Good, thank you. And of course, as we start, the one, one and only fly uh, uh, comes to disturb us. No. Yeah. Matthew Thackeray, as I said, will be our guest and we'll uh, look forward to the next half an hour with him. Matt, um, how we always start and how we always uh, get things going. Obviously, you're a jockey, but... At any stage, were you born into the family of racing, or, or, or was it in your family, or how did you hear about horses riding? So, I wouldn't necessarily say I was born into it. Um, my family always followed. The only other thing that wa um, was that my dad actually applied at the when he was younger. Okay. So he actually applied to become a jockey, and I mean he was I think he was 49 kilos till the age of about 35. Sure. So he, at, at that, he, I mean, he was light for then, but I mean, the weights were a lot lower at that time. So when he applied, they obviously turned him away, and then he thought maybe we're going to like an assistant trainer, isn't it? And then he sort of faded off the idea of that, and he just followed the racing as it went on. Um, I think it all stemmed from his grandmother. She used to like to punt the horses. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it all stemmed from there, and I mean, it just rolled down to where I went forward and tried it out. Okay. Um, so your dad's always, as you say, in the family, always enjoyed having a bet and always enjoyed being part of racing and, and just a racing follower, really. Yeah, you know, and uh, obviously when I was younger, my dad used to go to the course, obviously Vol Race course and that, because I'm from Joburg myself. Um, he used to take us for a day out at the races as kids to watch the racing and so on. So, I mean, obviously it grew on to me at that point. Mm, mm. And when the, funny enough, when the opportunity came forward, um, my mom was actually the one who said maybe I should try it out and my dad said there's no chance I'd make it because of the weights um, Because obviously he remembered what the weights were back then sure. and we went through all the Obviously the necessary processes and that and yeah, so today Sure, that's, you, you lived at um, Henley, Henley on Clip. Eh? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. born and bred in Henley. Yeah. Where is exactly is Henley on Clip? So uh, it's between Mayerton and oof, it's a bit of a hard one, like, it's centre between the Vol and Turfington, I'd put okay, it Okay, I was just going to say, is it near sort of Freemating out Vol way? Yeah, but, yeah. A, well, not that far out, but it's a lot, it's also a lot to do with horse country, so I mean, okay. uh, we have two riding schools actually not so far away from us, but, like, well known for our area. Now, my cousin lived there, uh, yeah. uh, Vogler. No, a lot of, I mean, the, the residents and that down, because, I mean, we've got the Clip River that runs through there. I mean, there's some beautiful houses, and okay. it's, it's, it, you have to go there to see it. Um, but yeah, that's where I come from. Are your folks still living there? Yeah. Are they still, still living there? So, yeah, okay. they, yeah, they're still there. What, can you remember what year you joined the South African Jockey Academy? Or you remembered, but let's see, let's, let's pick his brains. Oh, I'll pick his brain. not <laughs> my brains. If I'm not mistaken, it was 2012. 2012, 20, was it? 
Yeah, 2012. 2012. Okay. And what was your experience? I mean, you know, you arrive at, uh, at a new school and, and you finished your matric at the South African Jockey Academy, didn't yes, you? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so you arrive at a new school, you know, you, you, you're getting your education, you're learning about horses, new people, new environment, uh, but you took to it like a duck to water. No, 100%. I think it's, um, it's actually the best way it could be done. Um, at the age we were, getting sent out, you, you sort of, it's the best way forward. I mean, you learn to grow up very quickly. I mean, it's, it's one thing where you, maybe you miss your family for a month or two, but then you're so into your routine. And I mean, you meet a lot of people there, whether it's right up to the fifth years, down to the first years. I mean, everyone looks after everyone in a certain way. Fair enough, you have to respect them because it's, I mean, they've done what you, they've done what you're doing now sure. before you. But I mean, you meet a lot of good people, learn a lot from people, and you meet a lot of people from, I mean, all over, which is, it's a nice thing. Matthew, did, um, I've gone blank again. It's, you know, you make me nervous, eh? Oh, good. You all, the, the people, uh, the, the blokes that are in with you is with Cal and Murray. Yes, that's correct. Uh, toothy. <laughs> uh, who's uh, tr um, Tristan. Tristan. Why, why does everyone call him Toothy? Because when he lost his tooth on the, yeah. and he went for the interview. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Uh, Tony Jelinski calls him Toothy. <laughs> Tony, that's right. He did in his interview yesterday. Yes, he said, well uh, done to uh, Toothy. Brandon oh, May. Uh, Shadley Fortune. Shadley Fortune. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not many left, but. That's what I wanted to say. I'm going to interrupt. It drives my family mad because when I remember something, I've got to say it. So let me say it. Um, you are how old now? So I'm, 20, I'm 26 this year. I okay. know oh, 27 this year. 26 okay. at the moment. 26 birthday. at the moment. When's your birthday? Uh, November. November. Okay. I'm um, December. So we're a month apart. So uh, you are 26 right now. That's correct. You've obviously, I, I thought you were a bit younger, but well, the point I'm trying to make is being at the academy, as you've alluded to, and getting out of home early has really helped in the sense of maturity because you've had to stand on your own two feet from a young age and you learn to accept responsibility from a young age it can only set you up i'm not saying that those that you know are, are, are still at home at, 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 in their early 20s don't have responsibility and maturity but you were you had no choice you were forced not forced to go oh. to the academy you once you had made the decision to go and join the new school and be away from your family, you were forced to man up. That's what I'm trying to no, say. No, 100%. I mean, but you also, I mean, you have to man up. Uh, you, you're going from running around, playing soccer at school and doing your homework to now you're working with horses, you're learning how to clean. Um, I mean, you, you, you're stepping into a big world. It's not, it's not the easiest transition, but I mean, they, uh, they prepare you for it in the sure. way that you trained and everything like that. So. I mean, I wouldn't say it's the hardest thing to change over, but it's 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 not easy, but it's it, you grow up quickly. Yeah. Who were you riding masters at that? Uh, so it would have been Rhys van Veek, uh, Stephen Jupp, and Lawrence Adoni at the time I was there. Oh, okay, yeah. shame, uh, Stephen. Stephen it's a yeah. sad loss, eh? Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he must uh, he must be about at least a year or two since he's passed. Yeah. Stephen, what a great yeah. man! What a good man. Um, now. Um, yeah, so, so that's, what, I mean, it's good, it's good because, the, you know, 27 year olds and 26 year olds that are still, you know, I, I, I think that a, a jockey 26, 27 year old is, you know, they've had to strengthen up, they've had to mature up, yeah. you know, which is, is, which is good. It, it helps set you up from an early age. You know, the thing is, you also like, when you travel in that, you have to, you sort of have to know what you're doing. I mean, you can't. You go, you, you're going on your own. You yeah. can't have someone holding your hand the whole time. And yeah, so you're flying on your own, you're at the airport on your own, you're driving from province to province on your own. Exactly. I mean, you can't land, say for instance, you're riding in P or something, land there and say, well, now what do I do? Yeah. I mean, you've got to get an Uber or get a car, get to the course, you know? Yes. It's, it's, that's why I say you have to grow up quite quick. You have to know where to... University of life. Yeah. yeah that's exactly it. True. That's exactly it. Okay, now uh, let's move on and then talk about... Um, Okay, we've touched on the year you've joined the academy and, and the other riders. Do you still keep in touch with some of the guys that you were with from that year? Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, I'm actually quite friendly with most of the guys. Um, even uh, even the guys that go overseas, I keep in touch with them and yes. so on. Um, but my, I mean, the guys that I with are pretty good. I mean, if you ride a winner or so on like that, everyone's like happy to see it. 
so they'll congratulate you and so on. And no, but I think most of us keep in contact. And your first ride was for Alison Wright. That's correct, Natra Nori. Natra Nori. She's Natra Nori. That September was September Clearwood. Yeah. September 13th. Okay, 2013. Now, was that was that the same? Was that owned by Mr. Jones? That's correct. Green, that right? green and purple colours. That's right. So that was your very first ride, Natra yeah. Nori. And where did it finish? I think just behind him, okay, seventh so, or somewhere okay, there. Okay, so just off there. And Matt, how long uh, did I'm not expecting you to give us the exact number, but how, how many rides did it take to have your first winner? If I'm not mistaken, it was 12. Okay, so I, I had one at Scottsville that I think, obviously now looking back, you could have ridden better. Uh, it was a horse for Mrs. Dittmer. Okay. And obviously looking back, but you know what? The winner came not so long after okay. that. It took me to go back to my home province to ride it, but we made it anyway. So no, that, that was uh, Fun City for Erika Vernon Mead. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Erika Vernon Mead, Fun City. That was your first winner. Very first And, and I suppose you can remember it like it was just yesterday. Yeah, no, I can. Well, I mean, just for, for those that, you know, it's hard to explain feelings and emotions, but I mean, well, your first ride, you must have liked most, well, maybe not. Some people don't get nervous, but we, did you get butterflies in the tummy? Did you get a bit nervous first I ride? think everyone does. I mean, it obviously subsides as you start riding more often mm -hmm. and so on, but I think everybody does. And your first winner, I mean, going past that line must have been just, yeah, it's, a, it's a feeling, it's hard to explain. I think at first it's, it's almost like it's a dream, like you, you, you think, oh, couldn't have happened and then later it like starts to kick in so but I, I don't think you can get over the winning feeling yes. I think whether you ride your first win or your 50th win or carrying yeah. on down yes. the line it all feels that, the same yeah. Yeah. yeah somebody said to me uh, who, who, a friend of mine who's, who's since taken a share in a race or, and since had a winner because I went on and on about you know because winning from all sides whether you back a winner ride a winner breed a winner own a winner and I kept on saying you can't, and I did eventually explain the comparison because there is a comparison, but I, I'm, this is a public show and I'm not going to explain the comparison so why do you bring on a up? public show just because maybe people can use their imagination. Um, and when he did have his first winner, he said, sure, you're quite right. Eh? He said, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. It, you, you, you've got to have a winner to experience that feeling. I thought uh, Matthew uh, rode a horse called Henry the fourth that's for, correct for Duncan House it was raced in the colors of my brother-in-law Greg Bodle yes uh, in partnership with some very good farmers in New Hanover yes yeah, <laughs> uh, Ricky, Rick, Rick, Ned. yeah and uh, he wasn't there because yeah. he had to work there that way. it was a Wednesday at Scottsville so I let it in <laughs> well, there's a picture. We're gonna, uh, Andrew's going to WhatsApp the picture to our In the Box Seat podcast uh, WhatsApp group. And uh, we'll post that picture up of uh, Matthew riding Henry the Fourth. I think Henry the Fourth may still be jumping, or it was quite a long time ago. He went ago. to Kimberley, and I, I think he won the three or four races in Kimberley. Yeah, yeah and then I, I think he, he's jumping, and, and if he hasn't passed yeah. on, it was, it was a long time yeah. ago. But yeah, Henry the Fourth. Let's talk about. Um, you obviously started in KZN and then you relocated to Joburg, um, but. Yeah, well, why move to Joburg? Was did you? What was that to go back to where your roots were? I wouldn't necessarily say so. Um, at that point, Joburg had a lot more racing. Um, I mean, Kimberley was still up and running. We had racing three times a week in Johannesburg, and then for me, Joburg was the easiest place to travel to any other province. So I mean, where guys were racing two times a week, yeah, because I mean, we still had to make a quota. We had to get our 60th winners and so on like that. And for me, it was, the, I think, the, as a claim for going there, the opportunities were a lot more because there's not many claims. And obviously, the guys that went there before are slowly losing their claims. So, I mean, it was one of the best decisions made. And I just think it was, at that point, it was a good, a good uh, thing to look at. Who was the riding master there? Still Robert Moore, was he? No, no, that was Mr. Waterson. Oh, uh, Gary Mr. Waterson. Moore came in yeah. after. After him, okay. Then you qualified. Um, we come back to talk about PE, uh, uh, Zimbabwe, etc. In your first group one in Zim, and we'll talk about all that. But along the line, unfortunately, uh, you had a bit of an accident, yeah. and you were off for a darn long time. Tell us about that. Uh, so what happened was, I actually towards the, uh, we were still in COVID time, so I took us. Francie Herald actually called me, and they had a. Uh, opportunity for lightweight riding in Qatar. So I took the opportunity, I went in, obviously I had to do two months quarantine. 
Uh, as I came out there, I, I think I raced the next week, but now obviously getting, still getting going and that, uh, we had a few rides. I think I only had five rides. And we went to gallop uh, horses on the Sunday. And unfortunately, I had a, what they call a local thoroughbred went through the fence with me. Went through the fence, the horse ended up in the parade ring, but I hit the, uh, the metal, well, what you have in the, like these plastic rails is like just a little stub that but holds the rail up. Into the ground and, and are, yeah. my luck, I hit that <laughs> with my shoulder. So sure. it ended up, um, they told me it was a fracture. So a fracture is anything like six weeks and a little bit onwards, maybe two months. And when I landed in Joburg, I saw the orthopedic surgeon and he tells me the scapula is uh, shattered into pieces. So now he's already extended that from the three months to the six months. Um, and in that time I was doing physio, uh, obviously because now I don't want the muscles and that to fade. Uh, so the muscles and that never uh, developed, like got built up anymore and so on. So I ended up seeing a neurologist. I need to find out I had a severed nerve in my, in my back and in my arm. Sure. Then later went on to, so in that time also I severed the pectoral and the bicep when I fell off. So obviously there was a lot of damage. Um, and by freak accident, I found a doctor um, when I was doing physio. The lady mentioned that a guy came in, he was in an accident and uh, he had a severed nerve in his arm. So by freak accident, I got a, a booking on the day. So I went all the way from the Vol to Pretoria side, which is an hour and a half. So I, I, I booked and I was straight there. And it took her about four months to agree to take the operation. Sure. Um, but so long story short, what they had to do was um, when the bones were healing, uh, because I severed the nerves, it actually uh, calcified over the nerves. So they had to open it up, clean it out. And so it was a whole process, but I mean, Within the three months after the operation, I was already seeing a lot of improvements. So I could start riding work again, building the muscles up, and I'm back to racing. I hope Qatar paid for all this. No, they didn't. They didn't. Jesus. You but know Matthew, what? Is that, sorry, carry on. We have good insurance. Oh, it was insurance. Uh, yeah, the, the insurance was good. So they, I mean, they covered me because I wasn't out the country for longer than three months. So I got an income replacer, my medical aid, everything was good. Because okay. so, it was about, you said it was two years that you were out of, out of two years, that's a hell of a long I'm, time. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was 18 months okay. before I got back in the saddle. And you know what, they were, they were actually right in the way they'd done it. I had to gallop uh, horses for the stipes to come back and just to make sure you sure, can obviously yes. control a racehorse yes, yes. in this situation. So it took a long time, but... Sure. It oh, was that's a hell of a story, yeah. That's yeah. a hell of a journey. Shame, that's right. But uh, now that you now that, now you're back and and uh, your, your life's you know ticking on and kicking yeah. on nicely, and you you've come back to KZN. I mean, I know that you'll ride anywhere, Port Elizabeth or Quebecer now. Yeah. Uh, you'll ride anywhere uh, down in that, down in the Cape Cape Town, Joburg. But you're focusing mainly on Durban now, you know, you, you need to sort of build relationships, which is what you're doing. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, um, obviously, like, since I've been out of my time, I never really ventured into Durban. Only when I came back for the Gold Cup, I uh, came down with a horse from, uh, that I won on in PE for Mr. Strader. So I actually came down to Durban to visit and I brought my skull cap and that just to take a few horses, I mean, because we're so used to it. And I started getting a few rides, so I said, why don't I try my hand at riding in Durban? And yeah, sit. I know it's tough, Andy. We know it's a tough industry for everybody, for owners, you know, jockeys, trainers, etc. It, it's it's tough. Um, and how have you found it? I mean, I know that you're building up a lovely relationship with the Miller team, and 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 you're part of their team, and you try and get to other trainers. And um, of course, you'd love a full book every race meeting, but. It's ticking along. You had a winner for the Millers just the other day. Uh, what was the horse's name? Don't tell me. Let me see if I can remember. Heroes. There we go. I would never have remembered it anyway. Also, we would have been sitting here for three hours. 99 heroes. So it's ticking along. It's going okay. Yeah, it is. Uh, I must say, uh, obviously, like Joburg, the racing, also the fields are small. So it's not easy anyway. Sure. Um, sure. I also find in Durban, the overheads are a lot uh, lower for like you're staying and you're traveling and things like that, where Johannesburg, our shortest travel is probably... 50, 60 k's yeah, one way. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it's for me, it's a bit of a change. You never know what happens. Um, obviously, we're, all, we're always looking to do the best that we can. But, I mean, coming in, getting the support, like you say, getting a winner in, 
I mean, you have to be grateful for that. Yeah. Well, you rode in PE for a long time. Yeah, so as soon as I came out of my time, I started riding in PE. And I actually had quite good success there yeah. throughout the, the time being. So, Who did you ride for there mainly? All of them or? So my main uh, stable was always uh, Tara Lang. Okay. Uh, like I said, I rode a f few features and that for her. Um, and then recently I was riding for them again. But you know what, uh, always PE, you can get juggle a lot of rides, which is nice. A lot of the trainers trust, like, if you're riding winners, you're always going to get rides anyway. Sure, so sure. with them, like P, you get a full book of rides. It can be a mix up. Yeah. Talk about uh, international travel because I want to talk about his Zimbabwe time and, 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 the, and the group one that he won in Zimbabwe. But t tell the people where he's ridden before this. Yeah, he rode right in France. Uh, what was it? Uh, Longchamp. No, Chantilly. I rode in Chantilly. Chantilly. Yeah. Okay, there was the. Uh, they call the future stars. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Beautiful. France, uh, it's the Arc, I think, this weekend, isn't it? Yes, okay. yeah. it is the Arc this weekend. Yeah. So France, and where was the other place? Poland. Poland. Poland, Poland, yes. Poland. Poland was a bit... Arabs, Arab ponies. Yes, but it, you know what it was? We rode it, what they call a city track. So, I mean, you don't really see the course. It's in the middle of the city, and you get there, and you have a race course. <laughs> And like strangely enough, you can't use a, a stick, which like we used to using. So like the rules differ wherever you go, but very good experience. Okay. Then we must talk about Zimbabwe. Uh, your group one in Zimbabwe. I mean, well, just uh, Zim's also been good to you. No, very good. A lot um, of winners. A lot of winners and features as well. So funny enough, the day I won the group one, I never thought Morse had any chance. Uh, we had a horse sent down from Durban uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was Flax that was running, that Argentinian horse, and then another one. And I was on a 66 to 1 shot in a group one, thought it had no chance to end up beating the favourite on the line. Jeez. So you must have been popular. I was popular amongst the trainer. <laughs> yeah, but I was popular amongst the trainer and the owners and all of it. Everyone he, he, else. It's a one man show out there. Yeah. It, um, he, he, as long as he wins his race, yeah. It's, that's, it, that's very true. I mean, that's something you put on your CV. Yeah, so, absolutely. I absolutely. mean, whether it's written in Kenya or Zimbabwe, it's a group one. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And that, that Borodale course is brilliant. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, wide, hey? Wide, wide, wide. wide not only that, just the just underfoot is so yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Like, as a, the course could race hard on a day and barely any horses pull up unsound or if they've had a lot of rain. Recently, we went there and they had a ton of rain. We actually stayed over the night before and we, think, we thought we'd never race. And we raced the whole meeting through. Yeah. And, and the blokes said that because Moradale was, was uh, overseen by a bunch of farmers, the surface was always oh, it was beautiful. spot on. Spot on. And Matthew, do they still enjoy, you know, I know Zimbabwe's in troubled times, etc., as, as are many other places around the world, but do they still enjoy their celebrations and they always enjoy a get-together afterwards and a few beers and enjoy each other's company? I don't still... think that will ever die in Zim. Okay. Um, after races is probably the best, the best time you have in Zim. Okay. But no, they're still as friendly as could be, beautiful place to go, yeah. uh, as welcoming as could be. So... I mean, whenever there's Zim racing, we're always willing. Okay, fantastic. What are your, uh, it's maybe a silly question, because we, you're not going to, you know, we say, what are your plans for the future? You know, people are not going to say, well, I hope to do as b badly as possible. I hope to <laughs> ride as, you know. But it's a question, you know, you're, may, not maybe what are your plans, but I mean, what are you, you here to stay? I mean, are we, can we look forward to having you in the province for a bit longer? And what are your plans? What do you, what do you want to achieve? Yeah, well, I think so. I think, you know what? There's a good saying, a change is as good as a holiday. Mm -hmm. And I think it's nice to change up the scenery every once in a while. Um, obviously, bigger plans, we'd, we'll all look to go overseas um, yes. if the opportunity arises. But you know what? The, at the moment, the racing's on the up. I mean, so yes, we went through hard times and so on. But I mean, we are building it up again. So if the racing gets back to where it always was, I mean, we'd, we'd keep a lot of people here. Yeah. Is your um, mother still your agent? No, so at the moment in Durban, I do my own. Okay. Uh, because, you know, it's not so much to base on where, as when I was doing Zim, Johannesburg, PE, then it's a lot to base on. Yeah. So you can't really race and do it. So now I sort of do it a bit myself. And, okay. Yeah. 
And you know what, it's probably, you say, you know, it's good. a lot of the guys have agents and, and, and assistants, which is good, which is needed. But I think also to, to maybe start off, you know, maybe d three months down the line, you can hand over to an agent. Because it maybe also just helps to build the relationships that you're chatting and, you know. Yeah. But eventually in time, it's good to have some assistance to help you, you know. Oh, no, definitely. Um, obviously, you want to find the right person, uh, people that study the form and so on, which... Um, is always a benefit sure uh, being me i can ride lightweight so i mean obviously if a horse is under the radar and it's got a chance and it's carrying a lightweight i have no problem doing yeah, it yeah yeah uh so no yeah i looked look at it obviously because you need it behind you but at the moment we're going along as we are weight no issue no issue seafood diet <laughs> but I see I eat. <laughs> so lucky. Oh, I tell you, I, I've been fighting. I was chatting last night and I was, oh, we, obviously we raced, as you know, and, and I went off to the gym after racing and I was chatting to a mate of mine and I just said, I don't know what else to do. I, can't, I said, <laughs> I, you know, I'm enjoying my exercise. I said, I just can't get this rubber around my stomach. He says, stop eating. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, we, we, we're making progress. We're making progress. But so you can seafood diet. Seafood, you eat it. Yeah, I see it. I eat it. Um, I mean, so on the way to the races, if you want to stop off and have a cheeseburger, no problem. Yeah. Okay, unless it's like... Unless it's really, really... Low low weight, yeah, low yes, low, yeah. but otherwise, breakfast Sweet. in the morning... So it's been good to me. Do you tease your colleagues that have to uh, that have to watch what they eat? Do you tease them a little? No, nah, I think because we've all been there in yeah. certain situations, so we know good. the. It's not, it's yeah. not nice. No, it's not nice. But I mean, the uh, the, uh, the boys are all friends, and you know, so we also like to have a joke every now. And oh, we'll again, take so. a dip. We will take a dip. <laughs> we'll take a dip. <laughs> but you just a little dip. <laughs> yeah, just so that later when you're not in the same situation, they don't take a bigger dip. But, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, um, Matt. Your, okay, so weight's no issue. You, Andrew asked about your mom being your agent because she was at one stage, but family, uh, tell us about your family. Mom, dad, sister? No, all good. Dad's been retired for a few years. Okay. Um, mom was obviously my agent, also was retired at the same time. My dad didn't want her working. Uh, sister's over in America at the moment. Okay. Uh, she's traveling over there. She's looking to obviously immigrate if possible. Uh, so... Yeah, family's all good. She's in uh, the dentistry industry, is that right? That's correct. Okay. So she's working for Ultra Dent. Okay. Um, okay. I think it's actually a good opportunity for her. Uh, I myself would like to see her go overseas and better. Yes, I sure, think, sure. especially the way it is for us here. Well, not I'm not saying us here, but uh, better opportunity. I mean, if you're working for such a big company, internationally, put yourself yeah, absolutely, forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your safety, everything comes first. When did you last go to the dentist? Don't remember. Uh, are you nervous of the dentist? No, it's just a waste of time and money. I mean, the last time I went to the bloke, I just told him to pull them out. Well, you know, I, I, why I ask that is because I have had a troublesome tooth. I mentioned it a couple of podcasts ago, and I'm the same as you. Don't go back for uh, root canal. Pull the darn thing out. No. No, well, the problem is this one's so far forward that if I do pull it out and I smile on TV or on the podcast, everyone's going to well, laugh no, at a me. A lot of trainers are really short of a tap in the front. Of the <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so that's right. So you're not the dentist's fan. You don't the fan no, if the black had a look in my mouth, he'd probably say it's got a nuclear explosion. Yeah. <laughs> All the fillings are falling out. There's nothing there. Well, some of the roads that we drive on, I mean, no wonder our fillings are falling out. You know, yeah, like, all the... All all the bouncing. All the bouncing. Now, let's talk about your hobbies. What other hobbies besides racing? Oh, anything to do with speed, huh? Jet okay, skis, so you're a speed freak. Jet skis, fast cars. Um, I used to play a bit of golf, obviously, when I was younger. Uh, a striker giving you a ride in his Porsche shit? No, that oh. would be nice, though. I'll give him a I call. even got a ride in Stryker's Porsche, oh, believe it or not, and when we were in Cape Town, absolutely. Oh, when we were down at the sales, yeah, we yeah. didn't want to walk back to the hotel, so he very kindly gave us a lift. It's a nice oh, car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a chat with Stryker. <laughs> <laughs> you, you better, you better. Okay, so anything to do with speed, eh? Anyway. Yeah, yeah, well, very much. Well, I'm always, I'll try my hand at anything. Okay. I mean, whether it's sports, like I say, cars, jet skis, whatever it is, I'm always willing to put my hand forward. Okay. Um, seeing that you have no problem with your diet, what's your favorite meal? Andrew and I said we're taking you out for a meal. Where do you want to go and what do you want to eat? Or not where do you want to go, but what do you want to eat? Oh, 
Food. Pasta. I enjoy okay, pasta. Very good pasta. Okay. Has to be. Okay. Um, and uh, beverage, do you, do you enjoy a glass of wine or do you have a ca- cappuccino? Oh, your if, favorite? if I'm eating seafood or like a pasta or something, I, I do enjoy a good glass of wine. Uh, Moscata, I don't know if you've had Moscata, which is, uh, it no, is quite good. Fill us in, fill us in, what is that? I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's a mixture of like, it's a, like a sweet white wine sort okay, of. Okay, okay, okay. So it's, no, nah, it is nice, okay. but I, I don't, on occasions, not. Okay. Are you still a beer man, finished in class? Okay. I'm funny, I don't think I've had a beer for a good couple of months. Glass of wine and a gin and tonic, yes, but I've done. No, gin and tonic, like cool drinker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> polish, the, polish the bottle before. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious me. Okay, what else? So let's have a look at our list, what we need to talk about. Your most recent winner was um, that one from, from Mr. Miller. The, uh, what's it called again? 99, 99, 99 yeah. Heroes. And for Tony Jelensky, who's firmly part of the Miller team, what a fun man to be around. Ah, oh, absolute. You know what he has? Full of nonsense. He has a track this morning, but he always brings a, a good atmosphere. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, you should, I hope you should bring some breakfast buns or something. Oh, well, you can speak to him about that one. <laughs> um, no, very nice. Huh? I'm actually, like I say, glad that I'm lucky to get the ride as early as I did coming here. So all credit to them and yes. a big thanks to them. And I mean, I get quite a few rides from them, so obviously we do the work, but... It's no, you better miss, uh, because I, I don't think Toothy can ride 50. Yeah, no, he's... I think his bottom's about 54, so... Okay, so you get so you're an part of the team, I yeah. mean, which, is, which is fantastic, and, and that's good. Now, uh, is there... Maybe it's a dangerous question I'm asking, but is there a lady in Mr. Matthew Thackeray's no. life? No. Not right now, huh? Hey? No. Okay. Long gone. <laughs> okay, so it's Mr. Thackeray on, on his own, flying solo. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, I want to throw a few uh, uh, quick fire questions uh, at you because um, it's been just fantastic to, to chat to you and, and market you and let the people out there know that there's Matthew Thackeray's in town. Um, race course, Borodale. favorite race course? Borodell. Okay. Okay. Um, starting stalls. Pressure. <laughs> yeah, pressure. You can miss the break and then you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Pressure. Starting stalls. There must be. A, I mean, it must be a heck of a thing. You know, in New Zealand, again, it's merely an opinion. They don't have the tops on. But I suppose you know, if a horse does rear, it could still put its leg over. So, but at least it doesn't. I don't know. But pressure. You see. I've had a, so I've had a horse in Joburg. I actually won on a. I think it was a week later. Uh, not a bad little filly, but she was just a handful. And she got a, a horse next to me, got a little bit worked up, and she went straight for the top, and I ate the crossbar. Oof. And I came off the horse, obviously. So she ran loose, and then I went to repass her, and then the next week she won. Can you so believe it, eh? She never ever won after that again, because she moved stables. Sure. So Can you believe it, eh? Okay. Uh, Cape season. Prestige. Yeah, absolutely. We Big horses. To, yeah, yeah, we've just had ours, and we look forward, of course, End of the year, Summer Cup 2 up in, in Gauteng. There's lots mm. of racing action to come. But yeah, but there's Saturdays. We will talk about that. Yes, yeah, so we'll talking. get yeah. there, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next uh, quick fire for you, Hollywood. Game changer. Uh, the Whip. Persuader. <laughs> Cars. Fast. Uh, cell phone. It has to be Apple, iPhone. <laughs> Listen, there's a stigma about it. <laughs> Obviously, the people that have an iPhone, they say they think they're better than the people with the Androids, but it's to preference. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, uh, what phone is yours? Uh, Android, eh? Old. Uh, old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if I had the fire question at your cell phone, you'd be? Throw it out the bloody toilet. I hate it <laughs> And then, um, uh, yeah, I guess a cell phone uh, must be Apple, eh? Hey? Um, We've touched on your overseas travels, which is fantastic, um, and I think that's pretty much uh, pretty much it. Well, yeah, it's it's always interesting to hear about the uh, youngsters. Our team are, are making us notes, so we. But while he's doing that huge race this weekend, talk about it like you wanted. Yeah, we've got the match and stakes, so uh, Charles Dickens coming back. Yeah, yeah. Dad Kaname has got a few runners in the race. Yeah, uh, give me a prince. Yeah, uh, let's actually actually quickly just get that field up on our cell phone, and we can read out exactly who the runners are. And uh, Gareth Vanzell has got that white horse running in. What after the rain? After the rain, then there's also, of course, uh, plenty of soccer, soccer uh, betting, 
Uh, there's the uh, card call. That card call is starting to pick up. You know the, the, the cards you, you oh, can buy the yard. Oh, okay. It's starting to pick up, uh, but we need to market it so you can go and bet on, on the cards, uh, how, how you think the cards are going to be predicted, etc. So there's card call, soccer betting. You know, another thing that's doing very nicely, chatting to SEPA, is greyhound racing. What is your opinion on greyhound racing, Matthew? I don't really watch it, I'll be honest. Yes. But uh, I know a few people that did do it. Um, obviously, it was a big hype and say yes, they mistreat yes. and so on, but that's obviously not the case. Uh, listen, each to their own. I mean, yeah. As I know, as Stewie Ferry, he, he, he likes the dog. Does he fancy the dog? Yeah, so? but he might just, just put on random because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd race anything, to be honest. Yeah, oh, like, absolutely. If you've got racing in your blood, you have two lizards on the wall running along the wall, we'd have a <laughs> bet on. Bet on it, yeah? Absolutely, we'll shout that was them home. A, the, the biggest cheer I ever heard at, at, at Scottsville was. Was off the race was finished and all the stampers were going down and then one just got over the line first. Like, uh, they all had a bet on the stampers. <laughs> bet on the stampers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've had a few bets on the sta on the stampers or stompers as well. Yeah. Mine, uh, and it's so funny because the ladies or gents, you know, they go forward and you're like, yes, my my stompers go. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they find one back and take <laughs> ten steps back. Ah, oh, yeah. It's like almost like snakes and ladders. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's um. Okay, so that is uh, Greyhound Racing. So get your bets onto the Greyhounds early in the morning. Plenty of coverage on Gallup TV. Greyhound Racing needs promoting, uh, and I believe it's taking off beautifully. Let's quickly read through the field for Durbanville uh, before we wrap up here, because we want to give you the exact Hollywood bets Durbanville. Let's get it right. Hollywood bets Durbanville. Um, yeah, the sponsors. It's still there after all the rain. Phew, how yeah. bad has that rain been, eh? Yeah. Phew, unbelievable. Um, Somebody sent a comment in once uh, and said, because we had just had the floods in here in KZN, and I said at the races, you know, thankfully the rain has stopped and all and I got insulted. You know, we need the rain for the plants to grow. Never mind the fact that the person insulted me to say that, you know, that we'd lost hundreds of lives, <laughs> that I was saying enough of the rain. We need the rain, but enough now, you know? Yeah. Uh, you always got this. Uh, there's always one, well, absolutely, each to their own, but there's always one, you know? Uh, the Matcham Stakes, Hollywood Bets, Matcham Stakes, Group 3. The field is as follows. Give me a prince, Craig Zaki and Dean Kanameo. After the rain, Loyola Makotwa and Gareth Finzale. Charles Dickens, Aldo Domeyer and Candace Bass Robinson. Cosmic Highway, Richard Faree and Dean Kanameo. Bright Green uh, is John Paul Van Amerva's ride for Dean Kanameo. And then there's uh, the penultimate runner in the race is Royal Aussie. Grant Fennikirk and Justin Snaith. And the last runner is a runaway song, Muzi Yeni and Dean Kanameya. Listening to that field, Matthew, although there's some good horses, well, they're all good horses in that race, um, even three quarters fit, in your opinion, Charles Dickens should have a, a winning run? You know what, he's proved himself, I think. But I'd also, like, obviously, following the feature season, and then I'd also watch Guinea Prince. Yes. Now, when you look at the ratings, they, uh, Charles Dickens is rated 132, give me a Prince 130, and the rest are out yeah, the back yeah. door as well. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm just reading on Sporting Post, uh, Dean thinks his horse might be short of a gallop. So. Uh, yeah. okay. so, interesting, so there's plenty of racing action. The last thing we want to promote before we bid Matthew Thackeray farewell is uh, I showed, who was it that I showed? Um, yes. <laughs> That's who it was. It was uh, the local coffee barrister. Who I, go, I go and have a coffee most mornings on my way to Gravel. And uh, they said, you know, they'd love to come racing and uh, don't know about racing. And I showed them the Gold Circle YouTube channel. Well, he's more addicted to it now than I am. Yeah. Uh, and he loves it. He watches all the interviews, all the racing. He's learning about it. And you go onto the Gold Circle YouTube channel. It's so simple. You go onto YouTube, Gold Circle Horse Racing. All those social media platforms, the, the, the Gold Circle Facebook page, outstanding. Instagram page, outstanding. Uh, and the YouTube channel, also outstanding. Go and uh, click onto the YouTube channel, type in Gold Circle Racing, and everything comes up there. The reruns, the replays, the advertisements, the preview shows, the betting guides, everything's there. Outstanding YouTube channel. And they put your tips on, that'll bloody bring it right down. Uh, we've, I've been, we've been tipping well, eh? We've been tipping well. <laughs> Yesterday, uh, you know, can you send, you send them back to the game reserve, please, Matthew? Uh, to go and learn how to behave. I'll go with you. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll be behind, yeah. um, 
you know, the tipping, the tips have been around. It's been tough, Andrew. You know, uh, people have got to understand. You, you know, you look at the publications, the winning form publication. I mean, you have got James Rich and and Peter ba Peter Barker who tip into this book, and it's it's fantastic. It must be used as a guide. But if anybody thinks that any tipster yeah. can tip eight races, first four or first five in a row, well, then they 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 they're not on the same wavelength because it's impossible. Use the tips as a guide. You know, use them as a suggestion. Do you like the horse? Don't you like the horse? Use it as a guide. It's so hard to tip winners. It's so hard to ride winners. Yeah. It's so hard to train winners. Um, so. Dees and I yesterday, a couple of value horses. The one of Dean Canemaz ran second or third the other day, number one. I forget his name. No, no, no. Uh, Mr. Master Starter. Oh, ah, yes. Value selection. You know, we thought it could place it placed. It, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. Uh, yesterday, that odds on favourite, we all went for for our, you know, banker and all bets. We nearly got beat. We nearly got beat. Um, <laughs> so it's tough. It's tough. You know, just uh, let everybody. Give each other some space. We, everyone's trying to do their very best. But Matthew Thackeray, sorry. If it wasn't tough, it wouldn't be racing. Absolutely. That's why the results are there. Absolutely. But Matthew Thackeray is also trying to do his best. So yeah. uh, lovely to chat to him and uh, to promote him and to be with him on our podcast. Thanks for your time, yeah. Matt. Thank you, guys. And, uh, Appreciate we, we, it. We always, you know, follow you, your, your riding with great interest. And yeah. Uh, yeah, all the best to you and your family. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. Andrew, otherwise everything sweet. No, good. Yeah. good lovely. Thanks, Matt. Okay. We recorded today on a Thursday because I behaved. We did interviews for the show this morning. So we know now it's either a Monday or a Thursday. But from the entire team behind the scenes, Apiwe, Senzo, uh, Tawanda, who deserts us now, he doesn't come anymore, Tawanda, Pe, and uh, the whole team that make this production possible. Thank you. Say, stay safe, punt well, and uh, be nice as always, and we'll see you. Where will we see you? Say it now with a bit of oomph. The number one book. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we'll see you in the number one box. <laughs>